Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. In our previous 308 testing, the performance of this factory gold medal match was so good that in this week's video, we're going to try and work on duplicating its performance. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of me here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. In this week's video, we're going to work on finding the right velocity and hopefully a node where we can see if we can duplicate the performance of this Federal Gold Medal Match Ammunition. I don't want to rehash the entire video, but the short version of it is when we first tested this ammunition, out of 15 rounds we averaged roughly 2552 feet per second and had a standard deviation of 6.8. For factory ammunition, in my book, that's pretty darn good. And this ammunition uses Sierra 175 Match King, part number 2275. And depending on where you go to do some research, the rumors in some of the online posts indicate that IMR4064 might actually be the powder that's used in these rounds. Even if it is, I don't actually have it in stock, so we had to go reaching for another powder today, which you can see on the table. IMR8208 XBR, hopefully good for a couple reasons. Number one, it'll be interesting to use because I think this is going to be the first time we've actually used this on the channel. And number two, according to the data to today, this is actually one of the highest velocity powders possible for this particular load. Our source of load today is going to be Sierra's online manual. And Sierra Bullet, it only makes sense to go with Sierra data. Or at least, that will be a good baseline. Sierra's data is going to be based on a 24-inch barrel. Our test platform for today is our Ashbury Precision Ordnance Remington 700 in 308 Winchester. This rifle does only have a 20-inch barrel. That's going to certainly affect our velocity information. But honestly, the 2550 baseline is roughly what we're looking for. We had 15 federal cases to use. Obviously, once fired from our factory ammunition, it's what we'll be reusing to perform our testing today. Our max charge, according to Sierra, is going to be 43.2 grains of 8208 XBR. In true Saturday style load development, we're going to actually back that down in 0.2 grain increments, but actually load to one over. Let's just go over our load data from start to finish. Our projectile for today is the Sierra 175 grain Sierra Match King, part number 2275. The primers for today are what we have to be assuming what Federal would have been using, the Federal 210M Large Rifle Match Primer. This is not the Magnum Primer. We are reusing our factory once fired Federal Brass. I had mentioned in the previous video, I was actually pretty impressed. The weight variance in the brass is actually very low for factory ammunition that I've, at least that I've shot before, and I believe we have less than the grain from top to bottom. Cartridge overall length is certainly something we could be arguing in the comments section below. When we initially tested this ammunition on our rifle, one of our groups was as low as a half an MOA for five rounds. So at least for our initial testing, we're going to be sticking with that factory 2.802 inch cartridge overall length. That's going to put our CBTO at 2.215 inches. 15 rounds is what we're going to be using for today to develop our initial velocity curve. I've had some questions lately on some of these style of videos, so in case you're not familiar, when the video is over, you can look for 10-shot load development style with Scott Satterley. The 6.5 guys will kind of walk you through that if you're unfamiliar with this style of load development. Uh, we're going to try and accomplish a couple different things with our load testing today. Initially, we're testing for pressure. Uh, we haven't got a whole lot of experience with this powder in our rifle, so we want to make sure we don't see any excessive pressure signs in our brass. In addition to that, we'd like to see if there's any velocity plateaus where we might actually be able to have a variance in our charge but still get very consistent velocities. Going with Sierra's data, we're going to assume that 43.2 grains is our max charge for today. So we're going to test up to two tenths of a grain above that and back down for 15 charges. So that means our starting charge is going to start at 40.6 grains of 82.8 XBR. In addition to Sierra's data, we're going to be using quick load to actually give us some good estimates. We can change our barrel length settings in there. And with our adjusted barrel length at 40.6 grains of 82.8 XBR, quick load is actually going to estimate our velocity at 2469 feet per second. Quick load slightly disagrees with our max charge for today. Quick load indicates at 43.2 grains, Sierra's maximum, that we're going to be at 62,248 PSI which is slightly above the 62,000 PSI maximum case pressure SAMI spec. Pressure at 43.2 grains, 63,122. A little bit over that, but we're going to be looking for pressure signs along the way. Any indication we have anything unsafe, we're not going to shoot it. But you can see the spent cases. We've shot them all today. I'm sure some of you will be disappointed. No group shooting today. We were just looking for a velocity curve. I still need to settle a couple things in our platform, and I think a stock change is going to happen before I thought. More than likely, when you the next time we shoot this rifle, we're going to have the stock changed on it. But that'll be another video for another day. 
Mostly we want to talk about our velocity today to what it's going to take. Since quick load is estimating starting at 2469, we're going to be maxing out at 2621 feet per second today. So hopefully someone there or 2550 will be found. So for those of you who want to see the group, I'll put that on the screen. It must not have been spectacular because I didn't write it down. I'm sure you'll be able to see the vertical change in there, which is mostly my setup and my rear bag rider just not being as effective as I would like it. But again, this is 15 shots. Velocity is what we're really concerned with. So let's just get to our velocity curve. Our, our actual velocity at 40.6 grains instead of the 2469, we actually re reached 2551. Though that was our first shot for the day, that could have affected our first round velocity being slightly higher. You can see at 40.8 grains, 2540 feet per second is what we achieved. Though quick load would have only estimated that to be 2480 feet per second anyway. We actually saw our max velocity at 43.2 grains of, of 2692 feet per second. Though 43.4 had a 2689 feet per second, 3 feet per second off for our max velocity today. Quick load's estimated max would have been 2621 feet per second, but the 2692 feet per second that we achieved would have been 71 feet per second over our projected velocity. Ignoring our first shot, assuming that that shot was affected by the cold bore, our second shot being 2540 feet per second and, and quick loads estimate of being 2480. That initial shot was again 60 feet per second higher than our projected velocity. Finishing out 71 feet per second above seems like that was just the offset for our data to what we got today. We will show the cases here in a second so we can look at the pressure signs. Keeping in mind when we look at our data set here, 2621 is the equivalent velocity to what pressure quick load is saying that we are going to be over pressure at. Looking for nodes, along our graph that might be below 2620 feet per second. There's really not a whole lot to choose from. We had that velocity drop there at 41.6 grains, but even the 41.8 grain charge was not the same pressure as our 41.4 grain charge. Looking at our projected velocities when we were loaded, I was hoping that 2550 feet per second was going to be somewhere closer to the middle of our graph, but some of the best laid plans, this is how they work out. At least we did see one shot in the 2550 range down there at the low end. If we were trying to match our actual factory velocity, probably where we would have to end up. Let's look at our brass real quick and we'll get back to our graph. Uh, going all the way up, starting at 40.6 grains to 43.4. I really don't know if we have enough rounds for our rifle at this point to determine all of its pressure signs. Our primers are slightly cratered all the way down at our bottom charge for the day at 40.6 grains. And those pressure signs do increase as we get to our higher charges for today. Nothing extraordinarily scary on these cases that make us think there was anything necessarily unsafe. If we are assuming that our data is anywhere correct, that's just a judgment call that you would have to make. Getting back to our graph, if we talk about the Saturday style load development for a little bit, plateaus really are what we're looking for. And there's quite a nice one. So we have very similar velocities from 42.4 grains all the way to 43 grains. I'm really wondering if there'd be a nice velocity node right at 42.8 grains and running 2650 feet per second. Depending on what pressure signs we're comfortable with and what our data indicates might be two different things. This would be one of those things that we have to go back and look at the goal of our test. If we're trying to shoot the highest velocity possible, it does look like that might be a node that we should look at. However, if just matching the performance of our factory ammunition, we probably want to spend a little bit more time down at 40.8 grains, seeing where our velocity would hit if we loaded some more ammunition. Now, when we talk strictly about cloning this load, let's talk about our factory performance that we saw before. In line with our factory ammunition, on our 15 rounds, our lowest velocity we saw was 2537 feet per second. And our highest velocity was 2563 feet per second. Like I said, that yielded us a standard deviation of 6.8 feet per second, which for factory ammunition, certainly nothing to complain about. And if we look, at 40.6 grains all the way to 41 grains, those three velocities over that four tenth of a grain spread all fell right into the velocities that we would have expected to get from our factory ammunition. As far as cloning is concerned, running this cartridge over a length of 2.802 inches, and if we're looking for factory performance and we believe our quick load data, that might certainly be the area to explore some more, especially if we're not interested in wearing our brass out. Going back to our quick load data, even if our velocity was wrong, it would said we were going to hit that velocity at 42.2 grains, but it's 2556 is saying we're somewhere in the range of 58,000 PSI. That would indicate that we're somewhere around 4,000 below our max case pressure. So if we had consistent results with this case at that range, 20, shooting 2550 feet per second, and we could actually get this thing to hold group somewhere around a half an MOA, I certainly don't think we'd have anything to complain about. But as always, guys, I'm interested to see what you guys think in the comment section below. 
If our real goal is to clone our factory load, I think running down at 40.8 grains is going to be where we're going to want to be. Though with our dips in our chart, I'm really not sure that this is the right primer. This is more than likely the primer that Federal is using to load this. However, seeing some of those drops in the velocity just makes me think we could find some more consistency in a different primer. But I'm always interested to what you guys think in the comment section below. If velocity is everything with this, having another 100 feet per second would certainly be nice in performance. But if we wanted something that shot fairly accurately and we didn't have to worry about pressure signs, I think down at 40.8 might be the place to look. This is how our testing went for today. You've seen all the cases. You've seen the velocity charts. Now our next step is just to be figuring out where we have to load. If you guys have any familiar with 8208XBR and 308, I'm interested to see your input, where you guys are loading, what you guys have found. Um, but even if you're not loading for 308, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Any comments or questions on today's test, please put those in the comment section below. If you like the content you see here on the channel, you want to see more of it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you guys back next week, and until then, stay safe in small groups.